Now, <laughs> I want to invite you to join me in welcoming Angel Santiago up. Thank you. So there's a quote that says that, and I'll read it verbatim, 90% 90, 90 of success is just showing up. The rest is the 10%. But I'm tempted to challenge that. And, and I'll ask you a few questions and just sort of listen to the questions and just feel what comes up for you. If it's really 90% just showing up, then does owning a guitar make me a guitarist? Does registering for college make me give me a degree? Does showing up to a volunteer event automatically make me a volunteer? Does pregnancy make the mother? Does getting into a relationship make the couple? Does showing up at your spiritual center or church of, of your choice make you spiritual? In each of those questions, if I own the guitar, in order for, to be considered a guitarist, I have to take lessons, I have to practice, I have to play it. Then I'll be a guitarist. Half owning the guitar doesn't make me a guitarist. If I show up to a volunteer event, but I don't pick up anything, or don't lend a hand, am I really volunteering? Just the mere fact that I get into a relationship with someone, does that make us a couple? It's the work that we have to the sacrifices, the choices, the intention, the energy and effort that we put into that relationship, that makes a couple. If pregnancy makes you the mom, what about the moms that adopt? I know moms that did give birth to their children that don't show up as a mother. Same thing here. If I go to church, if I come here on Sundays, does that automatically make me a spiritual person? Are you familiar with Brené Brown? You've heard of Brené Brown? In one of her talks, she talks about having an attitude of gratitude. Right? She talks about having an attitude of gratitude. And she also cautions the danger with that. Because she says, I love yoga. And I wear the yoga pants and I wear the yoga clothes. But I don't go do yoga. She says, you could say I have a yoga attitude. I don't practice yoga. So I, I challenge the same thing here. If I show up here on Sundays, and I wear the right clothes, and I, and I stand the right way, and I speak the right talk, and I wear the right jewelry, and I look the part, but yet, in my day to day, my life has not changed. I'm not overcoming some kind of fear. I'm not letting go of some kind of habit that's a limiting habit that's, like, that's self-destructive or self-sabotaging habit. My life's not improving. I'm still getting into the same kind of problems. I'm still in the same struggle. Like even if it's 1% progress, because a lot of times we want to talk about success, it's like I'm not there yet, right? But are you making progress towards that? Even if it's 1% progress, if you make 1% progress in a month, that's 30 days, that's 30% progress. So we, we want to measure success like this huge thing that if I'm not there yet, then I haven't succeeded yet. But everything we're doing here, everything you're learning, if you go on Wednesdays, if you meditate on a daily basis, that stuff should be making changes in your life. Like I'm, I'm reading a book called, I just recently got it, it's called Transformational Politics. And I saw it because it was, it, the, the, the topic came up in a show that I was watching. I mean, has, has any of you seen The Messiah on Netflix? Yeah? It was, it was okay. 
<laughs> but what really stood out to me was the term transformational politics. I was like, what is transformational politics? And I'm reading through this book, and it talks about many different themes that show up in transformational politics. And it brings it to the personal. And it talks about what positive and peaceful changes are you making in your life? It talks about, are you looking at your personal life, your home life, your spiritual life, your community? Like, what are you doing there? And, and it reminded me of what just happened in Puerto Rico, where they, or they asked the governor of Puerto Rico to, to resign or to, to, to leave, to, to get out of office. And that was a great thing for the people of Puerto Rico, because they needed to make that change. But then I was taking a shower after I was reading the chapter, and I was like, but then I wonder, how many people that decision impacted their personal life? Yes, we got rid of the governor, now we have another one. But did your personal life change? Did the dynamic within your home change? Is your parenting, did your parenting get better? Is your dynamic with your husband or your wife or your girlfriend or your partner any better? Are you, are you, did you impact your job? Did you, are, you, are you becoming a better employee? or a better business owner somehow, some way. Right, it's just, what are we doing within ourselves? Otherwise, what is all this for? <coughs> right, why, why are we doing this? And it's great to make big change like that. But at the end of the day, the change that needs to happen, needs to happen within you. That little by little, I'm becoming a little bit more patient, a little bit more kind, a little bit more caring, a little bit more loving, a little bit more connected, a little bit more understanding. That whatever, like, who was here for house talk last week? Anybody was here for? I mean, that's that's it. I mean, if if you if you've seen how before, he doesn't make a new talk. It's the same talk every time. Right? But we forget. <laughs> right? It's the same talk, everything, with a new story, but the same talk. And it's that important. It's that important. This is real easy to want to like work out here, but it's not as easy to do it in here. I'm also reading a book, on, an Audible. You're familiar with Audible? On listening. It's one of the things that I probably want the most. I want to be listened to. Who doesn't want to be listened to? So I thought to myself, well, based on how it's taught, if that's something that I really want, then maybe I should learn something about it. Maybe I'm doing something wrong about it. Maybe I'm not listening properly. And so I'm learning about it. And I want to share a little bit of the research that was found in that talk, in that, in that book. There's a, and I, and I don't know the school, I'm paraphrasing all of this, I'm just going to give you the highlights. But there's a debate program in the school, and the teacher shares that the number one fear of, her, of his students in the debate program is that if I open up to hear another person's point of view, to truly understand the other person's point of view, that I lose my stance on mine. I'll lose my firmness on my stand, on my position, on my belief, on my view. That if I truly open up and understand your point of view, your opposing view, that I'll lose sight of what's important to me. I'll take it further. They did an fMRI scan, they plugged them into this device, and they had them listen to an opposing, opposing view. The brain lit up in the same way as if they were about to get attacked by a bear. That's how scary it is to listen to an opposing view. I was sharing this with my supervisor at work, and she says, I, list, I read that in a different book, and it said that if I listen to you, to your view, to your belief, to your stance, and I don't say anything back to disagree or, or say, no, well, this is my stance, this is my point of view, it's almost an existential 
threat to you. Like you, you cease to exist in yourself. It's an existential threat. So I, all these things are tied together. So I read further along in the book that I'm reading now on transformation of politics, and it says that what we should be looking for more in our lives is an opponent. Someone who can disagree with us. If you truly want to grow. That that's who you need to be listening to. Someone who disagrees with you. And going back to the audible on, the, on listening. We talk about politics. Right? Uh, and, I, and I don't remember the, the gentleman's name, but he, used to be, he was a POW. He passed away just recently. Uh, older gentleman. Huh? McCain. McCain, when he was on his, on his deathbed, I guess you could say, he said that what we need, not, what we need more is, is com committee leadership, right? Kind of like what we did here in the circle, a, a shared leadership, where you can look at different sides on the table and then get to a compromise or a happy medium, right? The healthy balance. And then going back to, say, in the same book, he talks about Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs only hired people that would disagree with him. That as much as he pushed for his ideas and technology, he wanted someone to push twice as hard against him. And yet, in our lives, we look for people who agree with us. Because then that somehow validates who we are. That if, my, if you don't have my experience on A, B, or C, then your experience is not valid. It can't be true, because you didn't have my experience. But if you didn't take that path that I took in your path, it's no good. When in reality, what, what, what I'm learning from both of these books is that when someone else shows you a different path, and it shows you an opposing view, that's where your view and your belief gets put to the test. Is that really true for you? Or did you just find a different way and now you have more integration? Now you have more path. Now you can choose a different way. Your, your way is still equally valid. Same with religion, like who says that this is the way? And so that brings me to my next point. I run into Christian on one of my runs around the neighborhood, and I'm walking, and he's walking, I see this guy like, I mean, it was kind of cold, kind of cold that day. It wasn't that cold. I'm not from here. <laughs> this, guy, from the warm weather. <laughs> this guy's like with this, like a scully cap, and, and a bandana, and a puffy jacket, and I mean, I'm like, I'm running, I'm like, man, that guy's cold. <laughs> and then I start to walk, and he goes like this, he extends his hand, and I look through the, all I could see was his nose. <laughs> I couldn't see anything else. And I'm like, oh, it's Christian. So I, I shook his hand, and we hugged, and, and it was interesting that we saw each other, because I, I didn't think we were going to see each other about, to talk about today, right? And he asked me a question, which I really appreciate. He says, what are you going to offer on Sunday? Because he says, what I'm offering is what I do, music, and, you know, well, what are you going to be offering? And I, I like that, because I'm not saying that what I'm saying is the truth. I'm just offering a perspective, a path, something else I can open up and say, oh, hey, that's, I didn't think about that before. It doesn't nullify what you already know. It doesn't, it doesn't, dis, it doesn't disbelieve what you already believe. It's, everything that you bring is still true. I just want to offer up something to consider. And when we show up here, or when you show up anywhere, one, what are you showing up for? What is your intention? And then number, number two, showing up isn't enough. I would say that showing up is 10%. Now that 10% can feel like 90%. There may be things that you're showing up in life that to build the courage, to build up that strength to say, I'm going to go do that, 
It takes a lot. But then once you get there, then what? If you come in here on Sundays, and we listen to how, we listen to the speakers, we listen to the, med- the people that lead meditation, we listen to the poem, what is it all for? Is it a habit because we were raised to go to church on Sunday? It's nice to hear. Interesting perspectives. But then what? Where, where do you take this home and apply it and make real changes in your life? Even if it's just 1% today, 1% tomorrow. And the last thing I'll leave you with is, when I was learning meditation, one of my teachers said to me, Angel, if meditation stays in the cushion, you're wasting your time. Then you might as well not meditate. And he said, you need to bring it into your everyday life. When you're doing the dishes, you need to be meditating. It's like, yeah, right. I don't like those dishes, so that's not happening. Like, I don't see how that could be, how could that could be possible. My dishes at the time, this was like eight years ago, nine years ago, my dishes would stack up. This is, I just didn't like it. I could, I could use the word hate here. I just hated it. Yeah. And I didn't understand them at the time. I was like, okay, whatever. I'm sure it will make sense one day. And one day it did. I remember doing the dishes, and I had no thought, no judgment, no opinion about it. I was just there, in the moment. Not thinking I hate this, not thinking wanting to, wishing to be somewhere else. I'm just doing the dishes. And now I actually enjoy it, I really do. I enjoy it. So, showing up is thing enough. Once you show up, and I, I pat yourself on the back, because that's huge, but now what? What are you gonna do with that? Thank you very much.